That's a very good argument, and there's and, and it might have been true that, I mean, innately, you could have a world in which government funded only the purest of science, like number theory, or astronomy, say. Why should uh, British Leyland uh, invest in radio telescopes? Um, therefore, let the government fund the pure science that the market would otherwise neglect. The trouble with that argument is that it's not true empirically. First of all, it's been shown by a succession of economists that there's a direct correlation between the amount of money a company spends on pure science and its subsequent rate of profit making. I pure science, which is pursued solely for its own sake, without any thought of profit, turns out to be the most profitable investment a company can make. Why is that? Well, the answer is that the most important function of scientists in the company is not the production of original knowledge. Actually, no company, however big, is anything other than a tiny bit player on the whole global stage. And it's never going to make the majority of discoveries it needs to make for itself, however hard it tries, because it, A, many discoveries come from left field anyway, and so number theory turns out unexpectedly to be very important if you're trying to make car tires in Alaska. And there's no way the car tire manufacturer knows that in advance. And, but secondly, your competitors are also doing research. And look, the main function of scientists in the company is to import the knowledge that's out there. And you're a manufacturer making car tires in Alaska and you discover suddenly that number theory is telling you actually how to do it. If you're not employing people who are intellectually equipped already to appreciate the importance of number theory when it becomes important to your company, you're never going to import that discovery. And you'll never make that unless you're actually employing pretty theoretical physicists or scientists or mathematicians in the first place. Because the most important function of scientists in the company is the import of other people's knowledge. So it turns out the more pure science you fund commercially, the more likely your company is to grow. And indeed, if you think of some of the most extraordinary discoveries, I mean, who, for example, discovered um, the background radiation from the Big Bang? Who, in fact, discovered uh, that, uh, that uh, stars produced radio waves? Both created Nobel Prizes and both done in Bell Telephone Labs by engineers employed by Bell Labs. They weren't consciously doing pure science, but science is such an unpredictable activity but these people who are trying to create radio telephony ended up making these extraordinary fundamental discoveries in physics. And it goes the other way as well. Silicon transistors that came out of Bell Labs and related labs, very pure scientists supplying their mind to a practical problem. So that then raises a, sort of another question, but surely no one but the government is going to fund the, the further development of radio telescopes. Okay, radio telescopes came accidentally out of industry. But why should industry continue to... Why, no, surely, the, surely no company would fund the Hubble telescope. Well, if you go back to the 19th century, when governments certainly didn't fund radio uh, astronomy, you have these huge 100-inch, 200-inch telescopes being built by millionaires like Bill Gates. Bill Gates is now this huge foundation of literally billions of dollars. I think, I think with Warren Buffett's money, that foundation is $35 billion or something. But it's now spending money on orphan drugs for malaria because that's an area that's universally neglected. But if Bill Gates lived in the world of 100 years ago, he'd be funding Hubble telescopes. Except he doesn't have to do it now because the government's doing it. And in those days, many more people funded Hubble telescopes or, the, or SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. I mean, the government used to fund that and it withdrew from funding it because it thought it was silly. There were no little green men out there. And now the American private sector raises six and a half million dollars every year to, to search with their radio telescopes for little green men. So the trouble is that in practice the private sector does fund the purest of science and in practice the government's not interested in pure science because governments actually are surprisingly materialistic and what they actually want to do is to stimulate economic growth because that translates into national power. And so the irony of the government funding the science is it's mainly dedicated as a form of corporate welfare. That's what it actually is in practice. And there's a huge row in the British scientific community at the moment because all the MRC, SCRC grants all have to say at the bottom, 
The scientist has to say, and you must give me the science money, dear sweet government, because with this discovery I'll be able to create economic advantage for this company. And that. So the government funding of universal science in this country today is totally distorted by the needs of commerce, in a stupid way it doesn't actually work, while at the same time commerce is funding the purest of pure science, because that's the only way you can keep up with the discoveries you need to make. So it's a nice idea that in practice it doesn't work. I'm just going to say as someone who's had experience of seeing these proposals, it's entirely right, you do have to write down what economic benefits you're immediately going to have by having this proposal. It's the rule. Yeah. It's a silly rule. I mean, imagine Albert Einstein, 100 years ago, going to his bar in Bern and having his beer and coming up with theories, and then the public is saying, I'm sorry, I'm not giving you a beer, Mr. Einstein, unless you can prove that your theories are going to have economic benefit. I mean, what a lot of nonsense. I mean, the government gets it wrong every time. And never forget public choice theory. Governments love funding science. Do you remember Bill Clinton and Blair standing there when the human genome had been sequenced, taking all the personal glory? There were some scientists in the background, but no one saw them. It was all Bill Clinton standing on the podium. And the irony was that the human genome sequence is largely privately funded, actually, by the Wellcome Trust, paradoxically. Did the sort of politicians taking all the credit and all the glory?